All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be covering shunts, what they are, how they work, and we're going to make one as well. So as you can see, this is the shunt that I've made. It's just a bit, a little, little bit of swiggly wire, really, but it works perfectly. And so from that, you can calculate current. So we're going to do some maths as well. Bit of Ohm's law, you know, have some fun with some maths. And we're going to use this little fun circuit that I've got, which is just free fans. Let's just turn it on here. Cranking some voltage up. So, yeah, we'll be having some fun. Let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the maths and start building stuff, let's just, you know, scrap all of that for now and let's focus first on what a shunt actually is. A shunt is just simply used to measure current. I do the engineering, not the English, so I can't really spell measure. So you actually see shunts, they're used on computer motherboards. You know, my power supply, for example, it will have one on the output there to measure the current that it's outputting. So shunts are literally used everywhere. They're super cheap and just super basic, really. Nothing really goes wrong with them. So you can get them in different packages and I'll chuck an image up on screen now so you can have a look. There's different types. There's the axial type, which is like the through hole type. And you've got a bunch of other ones. You would have seen these around if you have looked at circuit boards and they come in literally every shape and size. So basically they're made up of a single piece of resistive material. So any conductor that has a resistance, the only thing that they need is they just need a super low voltage drop. So you want current to flow through it, but you want it to be a low voltage drop. And the reason why is because the shunt is there to measure the current of the circuit and it's not there to affect the current of the circuit. You, if you had a high voltage drop, then you'd be reducing the amount of current in the circuit. And that's not a good thing. A measurement device shouldn't be affecting the rest of the circuit. It should just be measuring the circuit, right? And so this is the shunt that I made. It's basically just a bit of 22 gauge wire folded up together. Now, multimeters are not actually suitable for measuring the resistance of the shunt. And the reason why is because this shunt here, it actually has a resistance of 0 0.01 ohms. And so my multimeter is not designed to be measuring the resistance of that. So when I put it here and I try to measure its resistance, it's going to give me a resistance of zero. And it's basically going to tell me that there's a dead short. So like I said, we want it to have a really low resistance. And typically shunts will have a resistance in the milli ohm range. And your multimeter is not going to be able to read that. Okay, so now you ask, well, how can you calculate current if you have only know that there's a low voltage drop and you know the resistance of the shunt, but you don't know the current, you don't know the voltage. Well, let's do some maths. Okay, so obviously V equals IR, you can't forget that. So if we want the current, then what we're going to do is I is equal to V over R. And so since we already have the resistance, which is 0 0.01 ohm in this case, put the ohm sign, we now need to figure out the voltage. And so all you've got to do is literally just connect this into the circuit and then measure the voltage across it once you get that voltage so let's say for example over here where it was 6.9 millivolts 6.9 millivolts then from there you can then calculate that okay well 6.9 millivolts divided by 0 0.01 will give you 690 milliamps of current and that's it it really is that simple and the great thing is that you know what i could do with my solar charger with my kit is I could use just a shunt like this, stick an Arduino on it, and then uh, use the Arduino to measure the voltage across this. One, as long as I have the voltage across this, you know, which is easy easy to do, any I can stick this anywhere in the circuit, and as long as I have the voltage across it, I know the current flowing through that part of the circuit. It's just so simple, so genius, and uh, yeah, you thought Ohm's Law was useless in school. Pretty good, right? All right, so we want to make a shunt, and we want it to be 10 milliohms or 0 0.01 ohms okay now the way that i'm going to know how to make that is i want to take 500 milliamps and put it through it in terms of the current okay and then i want to get a 5 millivolt drop across that shunt we go with 5 millivolts because i want it to be a voltage amount that isn't going to affect the rest of my circuit so when i eventually get around to making my own solar charger if i use a shunt and i make my own one five millivolts doesn't affect the 3.7 volts or five volts or seven volts coming from the solar panel so you want it to be a nice tiny very small voltage drop and so that's what five millivolts is obviously 
Now you want to get a wire. I've got my wire here. So this wire is 22 gauge wire, 22 American wire gauge, AWG. Now it doesn't matter what wire you use. However, every single wire has its own resistance standard. So if you use the uh, AWG standard or the British standards or anything else, check your wire gauge. So this one being 22. And then you'll be able to find on Google the resistance per thousand meters. And then you could take that number, divide it by a thousand, and then you get the resistance per meter. So for this 22 gauge wire, then the resistance per thousand meters is 52.7 ohms. So we've got 52.7 ohms per 1000 meters. So that means that one meter will give us a resistance of 0 0.0527 or 53 milliohms. So remember, I want 10 milliohms and not 53 milliohms. So I just divide that by five. So instead of one meter, I take 20 centimeters, and then that will give me roughly 0 0.01 and then 0 0.5012, whatever. Doesn't make a difference. That's too small now. So 0 0.01 ohms. And there you go. I got my 10 milliohms uh, from 20 centimeters. So I just need 20 centimeters of this. Now I don't have a ruler, so I'm just going to have to guess it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 20 centimeters, let's say it's about that long, and then I'm just going to strip this wire here, and then I'll use my multimeter to find the exact amount. All right, here we go. So here's my stripped 20 centimeters of wire. It's the same 22 gauge. So now what I need to do is I need to put make a circuit, put 500 milliamps of current through that circuit, so that I have 500 milliamps going through this shunt or through this wire. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expect to get a five millivolt drop across this. And so if I measure this, this will probably come out to be like maybe 5.2, 5.5, 6 millivolts, depending on how off I am in terms of my random guess of 20 centimeters. So I'm going to, I'm going to take one probe, put it here, take the other probe, move it along until I get to exactly five millivolts. And then I'll just chop off the rest. And then that will be a perfect 10 milliohm shunt. And it's really, it really is that easy to make one. So let's um, take a circuit now and then we'll find our five millivolts drop point and then that will be the length of our shunt. All right, so here we go. I've got three fans plus three LEDs. I mean, you could use whatever. I just wanted just something that would draw 500 milli or 500 milliamps of current. And so if I turn on my power supply now, the fans kick on, the LEDs turn on. The LEDs aren't really needed, but who doesn't like lights? And then so I've got nine volts and 0 0.53 amps. So if I just turn it down a bit more, there you go. Oh, there you go. So now we've got 500 milliamps of current going into the circuit. So if I just take my shunt, you know, wire thingamajig, and then all I gotta do is just disconnect the positive here, connect it here. Let's try and get it right on the end. And then I need another one just to connect onto there. So if I touch that, so let me just use another alligator clip. Here we go. I want it as far on the end as possible. There we go, cool. So now we've got that whole 500 milliamps going through this wire or shunt as we call it. And then so now let's take a multimeter here put it onto volts and now we simply need to just put one end here right at the beginning and then move the other one across so you can see you got 1.2 millivolts so i just keep moving it oops 4.6 there we go five millivolts so i was pretty much bang on i just need to snip off like maybe two centimeters there. I, I did about 22, 22 centimeters. So if we go all the way to the end, there's 5.4. So just back here a bit. There you go. We've got our five millivolt drop. And then that means that from there to here is exactly 10 milliohms. Perfect, right? Now what I've done is I've just cut the same length, but this time just with, you know, the sleeve on it. That way I can fold it up 
nice and small so that way it doesn't I don't want to make an inductor but just fold it up nice and small because if you had that like that but with you know the actual solid core wire with no casing on it then you're actually going to short out the shunt and so the resistance is actually going to be a lot less than you think it's going to be so that's the reason to make sure that like this now you can have it nice and small so it doesn't really affect anything and then now i can just connect it there so let's uh, do that so you guys so it's still working still the same length but i've just folded it up now and since it's got a sleeve on it it's not shorting anything out okay so now let's confirm that this shunt does actually work now remember what's the purpose of the shunt the purpose is so that we can figure out how much current is going into the circuit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust this uh, voltage and then i'm going to cover up the current so that that way we can calculate using maths and ohm's law what the current is and then we can confirm it on the on the power supply all right so now i've got the current um covered up there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take out these leds that will change the current obviously probably i mean that will drop the current ah can't get this one out yeah there we go cool okay so we remove three leds and then we're just going to crank up the voltage i don't know how these are 12 volt fans so i'm not sure what they could really take I mean, it could probably go to 16, 18 volts, probably, but that's fine. Okay, so now I don't know what the volt, the current of the circuit is, right? So all I got to do is take my multimeter, still on volts mode, right? Bring it to this shunt, stick it here. Let's do the right around. And here, this is not the easiest to do. Okay, there we go. So we've got 6.9 millivolts. Cool. So now all we've got to do is just do some Ohm's law. So V is equal to IR. Uh, v divided by R is equal to I. We want I. And so we've got V, which we said was 6.9 millivolts. Divide that by our resistance which is 0 0.01 ohms and that will give us uh, 690 milliamps let's see if we're right 700 so it was 10 10 milliamps off and i'm guessing that's probably due to the length of this not being that perfect and also the uh my multimeter reading the voltage let's just check again it does seem to be fluctuating a, a bit but you can see that that gave us a very close estimate all right what we got now yeah it's still 6.9 what's it here seven so i'm not measuring it right at the tip and that's where i'm kind of going a bit off it's not perfectly accurate and you would expect that in terms of real world versus calculations let me just turn this off so loud isn't it but yeah, so that's it. So you can see 700 milliamps versus 690. So this is how shunts work. And this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to try to make a basic shunt solar charge controller just using like this, a known resistance basically. And you could use anything, you know, I could use a pipe. As long as you know the resistance of, you know, whatever this thing is, then from there, you can just take the voltage, measure the voltage, and you can work out the current. And that's, that's what these things do. This thing here probably has a shunt. Uh, measuring its voltage at the uh, the output and that's it it's as simple as that and so i love this stuff man i'm loving electronics and i really look forward to to trying to convert this into a solar charge controller <laughs> it's gonna be very interesting if you're interested in that kind of stuff subscribe and yeah i'll see you guys next one take care all right so because i don't like that it wasn't accurate <laughs> i've made another circuit i've just put two high um high powered resistors so that I could just pump a bunch of voltage into it. So you can see I got 14.8 volts into one LED and we got 120 milliamps of current. So we can easily calculate this again just by taking our multimeter and then across our shunt and we got 1.2 millivolts there. So if we take our 1.2 millivolts drop 
divided by 0 0.01 ohms and that gives us obviously 120 milliamps boom <laughs> it worked <laughs> I, I'm guessing that you know as the current is increased the accuracy decreases a bit probably my bad with this but is what it is but yeah so you can see it worked there it was, it was a bit off there I think it was 710 milliamps there so yeah cool I'm glad it works though.